I want to look at the roof. This is what I call the roof versus the spire. And I want to look at a single column on that spire. By the way, this central area here is called the spire. So we hear me call the core columns or the spire. This is just a picture, a still picture. This happens to be in front of another building. It's not tied to this building. And this spire or this central core columns, which again stood for 15 seconds after the building came down, are very straight. And you can see all the connections from all the floors. The floor spacing, I'm sure you can correct me on this one. They were probably about 12 or 14 foot spacings out there. 12 feet. 12 foot spacings. Okay. So these are all the connections. And, and inside this area here ran the, uh, ran the elevators. And, and there's, there's capacity equations that tell you that the strength of a column is dependent upon how long the column is, called its effective length, and whether it's connected on both sides. Well, this column here, when it was built, had connections every 12 feet, right, going up. And yep. now it's it's just standing there. It's just slightly wavering, but notice it's not buckled. Now this column is much, much, much longer. Matter of fact, I estimate it's roughly maybe about 100 feet long if you compare with these floors of this building over here. Now you have a long, thin column um, that's fixed at the bottom and free at the top. Well, I can tell you when you have a long, free column like that, that's much longer, that the capacity, the downward load on that column is much less and not more than its original design strength because it was designed to be connected all through here. So, so any downward force from a falling top block or a pancake floor had to be less, had to be imposed less on this column and not more than its design strength, or we would have seen this thing buckled. And by the way, there's some other ones here too. So the force during the collapse process on this column to allow it to be straight like that and not buckled was less and not more. In other words, if you take a toothpick, okay, and there I am holding a toothpick, and you try to drop a plate through the toothpick, well, obviously that toothpick cannot remain straight and the, and the plate fall through it. Something's got to give. Either the toothpick's got to give, and in our case, the toothpick didn't give, or the plate's got to give in order to get down through that toothpick. Well, in the South Tower, there were uh, 35 or so plates uh, all together. Right. So something happened to them to get something through that happened. toothpick, I think. Right. So the since the upper floors cannot fall through the standing spire, spire core column, the roof trusses, the roof, this whole roof, that was a bit, these things are an acre in size, that whole roof and this hat truss, we talked about the hat truss earlier, and all the floors below it had to have been fragmented and or propelled laterally, that lateral motion, in order to pass through this standing spire without buckling, and it didn't buckle. So we know all the material above had to impose, whatever force hit that was much less than the design there. It had to have been blown outward. Hmm. And that explains why the first volume to be destroyed was the upper block. It also explains why we can't see that upper block after the first two or three seconds. It's gone. They were destroyed and blown outward before they ever got down to those lower inner core columns. And those lower inner core columns, that were around, I think, around the 60th floor, roughly. So they had to have been destroyed or that spire would have buckled. Well, not only is the crush down, crush up theory wrong because it doesn't match experiment, nor does it follow Newton's laws, the pancake theory has to be wrong. In fact, all gravitational collapse theories are wrong. Whatever theory you come up with, if it's just gravity alone, it's got to be wrong. Or the columns that we observed in those standing spire would have buckled, something would have bent. It didn't, it stood straight. Now, there's many other reasons why all gravity collapse theories are wrong, um, the missing jolt, all kinds of other reasons. But this is just a direct observation. It doesn't take any equations or any math to see it, that it has to be wrong. The spire, that standing spire, is the Achilles heel of all gravita gra gravitational collapse theories, or it would have buckled and bent, and it didn't. It's also the Achilles heel for the do, the mini nuke, any aluminum sprinkler theories too, because again, that aluminum was long gone by the time we saw this. 